Good morning, guys. So today we are going to read The Powers of Ten. And this book was written by Judy Newhoff and Deanna Ruby Zevin. And it was illustrated by Kate Pittner. So let's go see what goes on with The Powers of Ten. So once upon a time, not that long ago, a boy named Doogie McDougal daydreamed throughout most of his elementary math instruction, never thinking it would be needed in his life. Like many of his friends, Doogie dreamed of becoming a professional basketball player in the NBA. In fact, it was all he ever thought about. I'm never going to use this, mumbled Doogie in the first grade when his homework was returned with minus marks and frowny faces. Oh, I'm never going to use this, grumbled Doogie in the third grade. I'm never going to use this, groaned Doogie in the sixth grade. What good is math when I need to be thinking about my layups? Basketball was all Doogie thought about, and his math scores showed it. As his passion for basketball grew more intense, Doogie realized that if he wanted to be a real professional basketball player, he would need a real leather basketball. One day while looking through his favorite sports magazine, Doogie read an advertisement for genuine leather basketballs at Nick's Sporting Goods. So when he was sure he had enough money, Doogie went to buy his new basketball. Upon entering the store, Doogie noticed a group of classmates known at the school as the Brain Gang. These kids always knew the correct answers to the hardest math problems, and they liked to make fun of Doogie when he didn't get the classwork right. Doogie nervously hoped they hadn't noticed him come into the store. So before I go to the next page, guys, please know it is never okay to make fun of someone when they don't understand their classwork. That is the perfect time to help them and to show them how to do whatever the problem is the correct way. So he found his basketball and he's made it to the counter. As he set the ball on the checkout counter and handed the clerk his money, Doogie was shocked when she burst out in laughter. <laughs> Are you kidding me? She asked sarcastically. A flush of red-hot embarrassment raced through Doogie's face, but he didn't know what she meant. Try again when you've got the right amount of money, she cackled. Well, Doogie quickly turned to race out of the store, barely missing the brain gang as he ran through the doors. To make matters worse, in his quick escape, Doogie tripped and fell flat on his face. He felt humiliated as people all around him began to laugh. Through his tears, he wailed, I just don't get it. And suddenly in a cloud of smoke and with a loud bang, Doogie was taken aback by the sudden appearance of a pint-sized superhero. Who are you? Doogie yelps. Well, I'm Tenacious Ten, and I come from the planet Numeropolis, where all the children love math and the power of numbers. What kind of name is Tenacious? asked Doogie. Well, Ten replies, Tenacious means I never give up, and nor should you. I have superpowers that allow me to help the children of this universe who are suffering from math anxiety. Those children who are seriously confused, but are too embarrassed to ask for help. The words... I just don't get it, are my call to arms. I saw what happened, Doogie, and I can help you understand your problem, exclaims Tin. Feeling a little unsure, but too upset to question why the strange girl is talking to him, he replies, well, I just don't get it. The sign read five dollars, but when I tried to pay the clerk, she just laughed at me. Well, what we have here, Doogie, is a place value problem. The same digits don't always have the same value. Let me show you. Well, Tim pulls out a place value chart from her superpower pouch. At that moment, a black circle jumps out of her pocket and says, this is clearly a job for me. Just call me Desi. Tim exclaims to Doogie, 
You don't know how powerful this little decimal is. Feeling proud, Desi replies, Well, I can turn five into five hundred with just two little moves. Well, ten continues. In our place value system, we use the same digits over and over again. There are only ten. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. It's where you put them that matters. The price of the basketball was fifty dollars, or five oh, not five. Diddy scratches his head as he says, Hmm, but doesn't zero have no value? Is zilch, zip, nothing, nada, right? Just then, zero, a loud mouth donut shaped character somersaults out of tens pocket. Whoa, 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 buddy. No value, shouts Zero. Well, you got me all wrong. I do a mighty big job. I am known in math business as a placeholder. You can't just ignore me. I hold the spot that allows the other digits to get into their right place. When you read the price of the basketball, didn't you see me? I'm the one who pushed the five up to the tens place, making it a $50 basketball. Desi argues, hold on a minute, without me zero, you couldn't do your job. I am the most important symbol. Well, zero responds, without a placeholder, you are nothing, just a dot. Well, in unison, Desi and zero shout, Doogie, who do you think is more important? Doogie sighs, oh, I still don't get it. Well, zero puffs up importantly. Watch what I can do. They don't call me Zero the Hero for nothing. Without me, all you had was five dollars, continues Zero. But look what happens when I step into the ones place and I push the five over to the tens place. Now you have fifty dollars. Ten adds, Dookie, if you push the five to the hundreds place, its value would be five hundred. We would write that number with two zeros to the right of the five. One zero holds the ones place and the other one holds the tens place, making it 500. Even though your bill has a five on it, the value of your bill is five ones. Your basketball cost 50. You would need 50 ones to buy it. Doogie beginning to see the light exclaims, Wow, zero, you are the most important. Well, Desi interrupts. Zero, you have no value without me. When I move to the left, I make you worthless. Finally, Tenacious Ten interjects. Okay, you two knock it off. You are both important. We couldn't do without either one of you. Doogie shakes his head. Now I get why I should have paid attention in class. This is why I didn't know the price of that basketball. Uh, yes exclaims Tin as she and Doogie high five. And you thought you'd never use this. Tenacious and her pals, Desi and Zero, to the rescue again. Doogie returns to Nick's Sporting Goods store, pretending to be a new customer, this time wearing a fake mustache and glasses as a disguise. With his new understanding of the value of money, of his money has, Doogie successfully pays the correct amount for his new leather basketball. That's a score for Doogie. I just don't get it. As Tenacious Ten is leaving, there's a ringing sound from her pocket. She pulls out her calculator phone and a voice on the other end cries out, the metric system. I just don't get it. Hearing her call to arms, Tenacious is gone in a flash of smoke. Off to her next math rescue. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the power of 10 and I will see you next time as we read another book. Talk to you later guys. Miss Lambert out.